we were looking at metabolic pathways. So what is metabolism? Metabolism is a sum of all chemical changes occurring in the cell. So interconversion of different chemical in the body. So catabolism is a breakdown of food to release energy. Anabolism is building useful macromolecules. So reactions involved are either energy requiring endogenic or energy releasing exogenic. Cellular metabolism depends on the action of enzymes working in pathways. So here you can see food is broken down to release energy catabolism. And those key points of metabolism is that energy is acquired and synthesized in the form of ATP. Some molecules release ATP while others need it to be built. Carbon skeletons are the main building blocks for all organic molecules. Electrons are released from some reactions and needed for other ones. So can you think of an example? So an example would be electrons released in carboxylic acid release reduce NAD plus and FAD plus to NADH and FADH, which are then used in the electron transport chain. So the flow through metabolic pathways is undirectional and hence irreversible. Different enzymes catalyze forward and reverse reactions, hexokinase and glucose six phosphatase. The first step in the pathway is often a rate limiting step. The pathway is committed at the first step and can't go backwards. Flow through the pathways is regulated. Compounds are only made when they are needed and enzymes are crucial for regulation. So the pathways is break food into energy or tightly regulated. They are current steps regulated by enzymes. Linear pathways, branch pathways and cyclic pathways. So linear pathways convert one compound to another compound through a series of intermediate molecules. For example, glycolysis, glucose converted to pyruvate. Branch pathways can be divergent. An intermediate can enter several linear pathways to different end products. For example, biosynthesis of purines, such as adenine and guanine. Convergent, several, several precursors can give rise to a common intermediate. The conversion of various carbohydrates into a gly glycolytic pathway. So you can see here A, B, A, B, C, D, E, then B can also go to X, Y, Z, or another way it can be C, D, E goes to S, T, or M, N, Q goes to S, T. Just an example. So cyclic pathways can be more efficient by recycling components. Compounds are broken down or built up on a carrier molecule that is unchanged at the end, for example, the tricarboxylic acid cycle. So let's have a look at metabolism simplified. So free energy stores in the body. So glycogen, glucose 6-phosphate, pyruvate converted to lactate, glycolysis, glucose going to glucose 6-phosphate and glycolysis. Then you have protein, protein derivation, protein synthesis of amino acids, they've got triglycerides, which is lipolysis, esterification for free fatty acids, acetyl-CoA, resulting in ATP. So how is this all regulated? So chemical chaos would result if a cell's metabolic pathways were not tightly regulated by switching on or off the genes that encode specific enzymes or regulating the activity of enzymes. Enzymes are regulated by a number of mechanisms. Gene regulation, the cell can switch the gene that codes for a specific enzyme on and off, and feedback regulation through inhibition or activation. So feedback regulation, re regulation can be through inhibition or activation. Inhibition or negative feedback, the end product of a pathway interacts with and turns off the enzyme earlier in the pathway. This prevents a cell from wasting chemical resources by synthesizing more product than is needed. Activation or positive feedback, the end product speeds up production of further product. So in summary, metabolism is the sum of all chemical processes that occur within a cell. Catabolism is the breakdown of complex molecules to simple ones. Anabolism is the buildup of complex molecules. Metabolic pathways can be linear, branched or cyclic and all interact with each other. They are tightly regulated by enzymes.